former MLB player, current Valley Sports MLB analyst Denard Span here on JNZ. Denard, what's up, my friend? How are you? What's up, D? Uh, what's happening? How you guys doing? We're good. good. Very good. We're ready for the season to start. We're we're itching uh, to get to the actual opening day. And spring training's fun, but just like any preseason in any sport, you know, after a little bit of it, you're ready to kind of move on and move forward. And Denard, I, I want to ask you uh, about that. There's one week left right before opening day. Obviously, you'll have the Dodgers games in Korea, but for the rest of the league, it starts over here in the States in about a week. What's that last week of spring training like as a player, as a hitter specifically, thinking back to your time in the league? What's the last week of spring training typically like? I mean, I I think at this point, you know, as a player, you're just like, man, you you just can't wait for the season to start. Um, You've obviously had a long spring, and uh, hopefully by now you've kind of gotten your timing and your rhythm going, and uh, you're just counting the days to get get to real baseball and playing meaningful baseball. And also, too, you know, you're getting to the point uh, where you're, you know, you're, you're ready to start playing night games and getting into that routine and that schedule of what it's like during the season. Yeah, it's a great point because you play pretty much all day games during never spring training. That. And then Literally you, you switch and now you're playing pretty much 7 o'clock Eastern. What what does that process change? Because baseball players are all about routine. And, wow, I never even thought about that. What a great point, Denard. Yeah, how long does that take for you to be able to make that adjust? Yeah, I man, this is why you get paid the big bucks. That's why you're going to be on Bally for the exactly, Rays and the man. Twins. So why, this is why you're the man, buddy. Uh, and the first game is like 410, yeah. right? So it's kind of funky. So when, later, I, I guess a good question is, like, when do you get into, like, normal routine where you're like, all right, you feel good? Does it take a day, a week, a month? For me, I can only speak for me. It took me a couple of weeks. Um, the first couple of weeks of the season, I was still in that spring training off season mode because most guys wake up early and train and do their work during off season early as well. So that kind of transitions into spring training perfectly. Um, but once the season starts, yeah, it does take a little bit of time because you know your body's still on that morning routine and you still find yourself waking up super early. So it does take a little bit of time. Um, but once, you know, once you, you know, your body adjusts to it and, and, and gets used to playing um, at nighttime, you know, that that's really the the schedule that baseball players, you know, love to have a good chance to, um, you know, allow your your body to recover. You get to sleep in and, um, you know, and I would say 85 percent of your games are at nighttime. One guy that will have to kind of figure it out in a different way is Josh Lowe. He's dealing with an oblique injury. I don't know if this yeah. has just become popular in the sport or it's just coming up more. I I'm seeing obliques everywhere, I Denard. I don't understand I it, man. So help, help us understand. I, know. I don't know if you've dealt with this injury, but you've definitely at least been around players that have. Work us through, like, what it is to have an oblique injury and what it means to a ball player. I, I've never I've never um, had it myself personally. Um, I, I've played with a couple guys that have had it, but I, I'm like you. It seems like it's, it's become more of a thing, um, more, you know, in this newer generation um, of game. And I don't know if, you know, guys are, you know, swinging so hard or, um, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I, I really can't put my finger on it. But um, from what I've heard from, from some of the guys that I played with was that, you know, it's one of those things where it's just an excruciating pain um, in your, you know, your side. And every time you sneeze, every time you reach over, um, or bend over to, to reach for something like it just, you know, it reminds you that you have a strained muscle in that core, um, you know, side area. So it's just a nagging injury. Um, it's nothing that, you know, um, from the outside, like an outsider would be able to to uh, see is just something that's internal that um, that it just has to take its time has to take its course and, um, and, 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 and for you to get better. Guys need to stretch, Tenard. That's my thing. I've been oh, saying it. Oh, here we go, People this are, guy. Mike Evans wow. said it. We heard Stephen A. Smith say it in New York. Yeah. Stretch yeah. more. It's the easiest thing we can do, whether we're professional athletes or just ham and eggers we're gonna, like yeah. We're going to change the name of the show to Retcher and Stretch. <laughs> Retch and Stretch. <laughs> Retch and Stretch. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> oh, this guy's been on this stretch thing for months now. It's oh, my thing. gosh. It's, it's All right. easy. Okay, speaking of stretching and, and, like, manipulating your body, we're hearing some two different things here. We're hearing that Randy Rosarena is putting on weight. We're hearing that Yandy Diaz is losing weight. Do you have okay. a concern that either one of those is going to be uh, negatively affecting these guys? Uh I'm trying to think. I'm, more, I'm trying to figure out why Randy would be, be trying to put on weight. Like Maybe he twenty. A, he wants to go thirty thirty, probably right. Go from a twenty twenty guy to a thirty thirty guy. But putting on weight is that going to help you steal more bases, though? That's a good point. 
That's what we're asking you because right? we don't yeah. think so. <laughs> and, and, and unless he, unless he's going for the forty ten, like, I mean, like okay. You, I, I'll take that though too, though. Right? Like, <laughs> the forty ten. <laughs> Got that right. You just just make up a you know just make up a different category, another club or whatever. That's but, right. Um, you know, Yandy, I, you know what? As far as him losing weight, like I'm fine with that. Like he, you know, always came into camp in shape. Um, but was more on the, you know, huskier, you mm-hmm. know, solid, like middle linebacker um, build. And so now, you know, if he can, you know, shed a few pounds and he th- and if he thinks that's going to help him, you know, stay healthy and, and be on the field a little bit longer. And obviously he's going to be leading off. So if he's able to shed some pounds and go first to home, first to third on, on some some um, hits in the gap, that would be huge for him in that leadoff spot. I want to get your opinion on this. This is something Jay and I have kind of been bouncing off of each other the last few days or even a couple weeks, honestly. The the Rays obviously have their way of doing things, and it has led to five straight years of the postseason, a lot of success in terms of winning games through the 162 long MLB regular season. But they have a lot of roster turnover generally, and I think it hurts the fans' loyalty to the brand. I think it makes it tough for fans as they buy jerseys and get things figured out. Denard, you played for the team. You're also now able to see it from a different scope, a higher view. You know, you're out in the community. You're around town. You're talking to the same fans that we are. Do you think that the Rays' roster turnover, although you could argue it's helped them have success on the field, hurts their brand a little bit maybe off the field with the fan base? Yeah, I I, I I think you definitely can make that argument, especially if you are um, a young fan, a kid who, you know, your favorite player is, um, uh, let's just go, I don't know, this first name popped up to my head is a Chris Archer. Mm-hmm. You know, he was with the team for, what, four or five years, and that's your guy, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, comes time where he's two or three years before his free agency, and the team does what they do, and they end up trading him. Um, so I could see how, you know, the younger fan base – um, and also the fan base that don't maybe understand the business part of what the Rays are doing would be frustrated. Um, now, from a business side, like, I love what they do. I appreciate it. Um, you know, they, they they obviously have, you know, a smaller market, smaller resources um, to, to work with. And there's a formula, you know, and that formula has obviously, like you just said, has um, over the five, the last five years, put them in a postseason. It's been proven to be successful and it's a plug and play formula that's based upon pitching and defense. And, you know, it, it's not only say everybody's interchangeable, but they, they found a way to get the right group of guys to complement each other. And it almost does make it seem as if like guys, you know, when you lose a big name guy like a Blake Snell or, um, you know, uh, Tyler Glass now, um, it, it, it makes it fun, you know, in my opinion, if you're a certain fan to, to watch to see how the Rays are going to put this this um, the, you know this piece to the puzzle for them to make it back into the postseason and to be competitive with their small amount of revenues. Denar, we're we're hearing some things yesterday, uh, and we saw it yesterday. Randy Rosarena getting some looks in center field. What's the yeah. biggest adjustment that he's going to have to make uh, from going from left to center? And do you think that he has the capability to be able to do so? I think center field is the easiest position because everything's right in front of you. If you can play left field and play right field, you can play center field. The biggest challenge is, is he, is he going to be in shape to do that? Is his legs, is his body going to be able to do that? Because obviously now you have, he has more ground to cover, right? But as far as, you know, the, the ball coming off the bat, you know, where the, and also, you know, where the catcher is setting up, like center field, for me, it was always easier than left or right field. Um, I saw he's done in, in, in his past. You know, um, I'm sure as a young ball player when he was younger, he you know he played center field. So I think you know once again, if he can get himself in shape and um, get himself you know mentally prepared to go, I think he'll be fine. Big time soccer fan and uh, future weekly guest on J and Z Denard Span here on the program. Uh, Denard, uh, we appreciate your time, brother, and we can't wait to have you in studio every single week here at one o'clock on Tuesday. We got to get you out to a Rowdy's game, man. We got to yeah. get you, Andy, and the kids out to a Rowdy's game. I know you're a big soccer fan now, uh, so we got to. Have you been to a Rowdy's I, game? I, I never have. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a newly soccer fan. I went to London. I told you a couple uh, mm-hmm. last week. I went to London a couple months ago um, and and went to my first live, you know, premier game and honestly first live professional soccer game. And it has changed my life. And so 
So whenever you guys are going to the Rowdy game, I w- I'm there. Just let me know. I certainly will, my Hell friend. Yeah. And it was funny because I tweeted about Man U and their dramatic win, and Denar was actually one of the first people to like my tweet. Yeah, I was like, my yeah, man Denard. I, did, yeah. I was like, bro, <laughs> my man Denard is not tiptoeing. He is jumped all head in. first into the deep end I'm of being a, of a soccer I'm, fan. I'm all in. Denar, we appreciate your Thanks, time Denard. today. Can't wait to talk to you every Tuesday, my man. Have yes, a great sir. rest of your week, and we'll, we'll be in touch soon. Yes, sir, man. You guys take care. All right. Good stuff. The one and only Denard Span. He's great. Looking forward to having him. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. Throughout the baseball season. Every Tuesday at 1. Not looking forward to a late night, but looking forward to the sports we'll be watching. Oh, I love late nights. Not during the week. It's a school night, kids. But it's also going to be a fun night because we got the Bulls, obviously, playing UCF down the road. Right. And we got the Bolts taking on the other Knights team from Las Vegas. I don't give a crap about Golden Knights, Knights, any Knights involved. I give a crap about the Lightning winning. What does it mean for them to win in Las Vegas in tonight's matchup? That's next. Bust out.